Hello and welcome back to my Sandbox EDB series in KSP 1.0.4. That's right, the Kerbal Gods known as Squad have once again altered the aerodynamics of Kerbin. Will the EDB shuttle still work? If it does, the blueprints for the shuttle will be released on Kerbal X for public use. This mission is ETS-4, launching Hoffman Station's Solar Trust Hub and Array Segments I-1 and I-2. Commander Haytrude Kerman, the pilot on ETS-3, will lead this mission, assisted by Sansi, Krasina, and Rosti. So here we go, awaiting main engine start. Main engines are lit. There go the boosters and liftoff. We have liftoff of ETS-4 to Hoffman Station, carrying the Solar Trust Hub and the Array Segments. The payload mass is fairly light at 7 tons, so we see Haytrude not using the upper OMS engines to assist liftoff here, and she seems to have it balanced, and roll program is in. In response to the new aerodynamics, this is a somewhat upgraded shuttle from the previous shuttle in ETS-3. It has two additional air brakes, as well as a drag chute to assist with slowing down on landing. As we've seen, the shuttle has had trouble stopping on landing, and so those are bound to help. It also has additional lighting so that uh, visibility will be improved in the dark. On the launch, Haytrude decided to go to a much lower pitch than normal before booster separation. Normally it's kept to 50 degrees here. Haytrude has it 40 degrees in response to the new aerodynamics. And we'll see if the boosters separate cleanly. And there's booster separation. And you see the deployment of their drogue chutes so that they can be recovered. Those drogue chutes helping them to slow down to deploy the main parachutes. And it looks like the boosters have separated cleanly without any damage to the wings. And ETS-4 continues. After Neil Brett almost gave Gene Kerman a heart attack in mission control with his approach and landing in ETS-3, Haytrude has spent extra training time practicing that phase of the mission. It looks like her skills on launch have not suffered though, as she is the first to handle the shuttle through this new atmosphere, and seems to be doing quite well. Somewhat unusually, we haven't seen Haytrude activate the upper OMS engines yet, but we do expect her to do so as the shuttle depletes the fuel in the external tank and the OMS engines will help out to keep the balance. Looks like the upper tank in the external tank is now unlocked and of course that too is to assist with the balance as fuel depletes and the center of balance shifts towards this, the shuttle side. Haytrude attempted to correct uh, inclination as much as possible, but uh, still had about a 0.6 degree inclination with respect to the station. There we see the OMS engines active, and uh, their effect is to keep the pitch up, and you see them doing that there. Now, it turned out that Haytrude overdid the burn a bit. With main engine cutout, you can see that the apoapsis is much higher than the orbit of the station. Uh, but no matter, uh, Mission Control went uh, straight away to fixing up the orbit and relaying instructions to Haytrude. The main engines were shut down, they only have one burn in them, and the external tank, of course, was separated. After confirming the clean separation of the external tank, Mission Control relayed the details of the burn Haytrude would have to do. Again, the orbit that they are getting the shuttle into will have it orbit the plant Kerbin once and then rendezvous on a second orbit. And so here is the burn. An unusual burn for the EDB shuttle to be sure, but uh, carefully calculated to have this effect. And there's the end of the burn. And so after this, uh, minor correction burns will be made to rendezvous with Hoffman Station. The cargo bay was opened and there you will see the the truss hub and segments I1 and I2 and we'll see those deploy once the payload reaches Hoffman Station. This was the rendezvous burn after ETS-4 orbited Kerbin for the first time and uh, you see a reasonable approach without too much difficulty there. The EDB shuttle still has not docked with Hoffman Station. In fact, uh, there is no docking facility that is meant for the shuttle attached to the station yet. That will have to be delivered up at a separate time. Here you see the shuttle matching orbits with Hoffman Station. 
And even though there were some comments in Mission Control that Hatred would have to work on her rendezvous skills, uh, she did manage to bring it to within the station uh, into the acceptable margin of 200 meters. And there we see that as she uh, kills the shell's velocity and releases the payload. And so the payload, remotely controlled now, made its way out of the cargo bay. Lots of RCS thrusters, as each truss segment also has its own independent control in RCS. The hub also has independent control in RCS. Once the payload was clear of the shuttle, control was handed over to Jeb Kerman on board Hoffman Station, and Jeb now has control turning the payload towards the station and starting to bridge that gap between the shuttle and the station. You'll see that the distance here is greater than 200 meters, and that's because standard protocol is that the shuttle is uh, kept drifting away from the station just for safety reasons during this whole procedure. Here you see the payload aligning itself with the target docking port and in this case the station was not maneuvered in order to assist the payload. The payload would have to make its own maneuvers to line up and dock. It also had to orient properly and you can see a uh, rotation there, a roll there to make sure that the, that the whole system was oriented properly so that solar panel deployment would look correct and there we have final docking of the truss hub and now each of the truss segments I1 and I2 separate themselves from the truss hub and redock in their proper locations and so here uh, I1 which is the side facing the crew compartments and the docking modules for the GBs uh, releases itself and aligns itself with the target docking port now I say it releases itself and docks itself, but of course this is completely controlled by Jeb Kerman on board the station and uh, he is maneuvering the modules into their proper place here. Each of the array segments has two large solar panels and also four small radiator panels. And you'll see that the radiator panels are placed perpendicular to the solar panels on the Kerman facing side. And there is the docking of the I1 segment and we'll see the solar panels extend. However, there is a slight problem. They are not properly aligned on this initial attempt. And so the, the truss segment has to be redocked. And that's what you see here. A little bit easier to notice the correct orientation once the solar panels are out, of course. And there we have the docking in proper alignment, or at least apparently proper alignment, uh, some adjustment apparently needs to be made there, but before any further adjustment, uh, truss segment I2 was released, and Jeb went to work getting that into its proper position. This time he took a somewhat different tact to uh, lining it up, and we'll see how that works out. Among the differences was the fact that uh, Jeb decided to extend the solar panels to make it uh, more visible how the orientation will work out. It's worth noting that with each of the modules of the station having their own control, the station is very configurable and reconfigurable uh, in the case that we might want to rearrange things and that might come into play later on. But uh, here the docking of the I2 segment and a little bit of a wiggle there but eventually magnetism and there we have it all nice and docked but obviously the solar arrays are not properly aligned and so Jeb has to redock the the truss hub there and so he gets them in proper alignment and tries his best to line it up uh, not the easiest task uh, but he does a good job and they look much better after the second attempt though uh, it looks like there still could be some rotation in each of the truss segments. Uh, we'll leave that be for now and uh, Jeb orders the remaining radiator panels to extend and so there you see the extension of the radiator panels and it looks like uh, this whole business of docking up the truss hub and the solar segments is a success. The station reorients itself to make sure that the solar panels are facing the sun properly and the radiator panels are facing away from the sun towards Kerbin to maximize their radiation capacity. And so this is how we will leave Hoffman Station at this point, uh, looking much better than before, but still a lot of station construction to do, and we will look forward to that 
on future shuttle missions. But now we turn back to the shuttle and its return back to Kerbin. After all, with the new aerodynamics, this is the point of most concern for mission control. And of course, this is what Heytrude Kerbin has practiced for so much. Step one, of course, is bringing it down to its 100 km by 100 km orbit in preparation for returning to KSC, and of course, that carrying it safely away from the station. And then the retro burn, the main retro burn that brings its periapsis down to, in this case, 25.5 kilometers was the target. And so that is the periapsis that Heytrude will attempt to use to land at the KSC, and we'll see whether this actually uh, manages to hit the KSC properly or whether she'll overshoot or undershoot. And here the shuttle is approaching dawn, descending below 60 kilometers. And the trajectory is looking good at this point, though it is too early to tell. The main atmospheric effects are, of course, lower in the atmosphere. Uh, here you see the trajectory uh, landing in the eastern ocean there right now, but uh, quickly drawing in. The shuttle strikes a stunning profile in the dawn, and we notice that Heytrude is actually managing to keep the nose up without use of RCS. She has not activated RCS at any point during this descent, and uh, it looks like she does not intend to do so. Keeping the nose up uh, to uh, get the drag that she needs without using any mount propellant or any liquid fuel and oxidizer. Remember, the shuttle has both uh, standard RCS ports and Werner ports uh, using both mod propellant and liquid fuel and oxidizer in order to maintain orientation normally, but it looks like Heytrude is doing a fine job keeping the shuttle's orientation without using any of that. Uh, here the trajectory still looks like it's a little bit far. After all, in the lower atmosphere the shuttle will gain more lift, and so the tendency is to uh, bring it in closer, further west of the KSC instead of letting it linger out in the eastern ocean. And so to correct this, we see the extension of the four air brakes now, instead of just two on the previous iterations of the shuttle. But uh, the additional drag produced by these air brakes was not sufficient to prevent the shuttle from going long. Here you see, obviously at 30 kilometers altitude, way too high to hit the KSC on the first pass, and it will need to go around. And so you'll see here, Heytrude turning the shuttle towards the south in order to give herself room to make the U-turn back into the KSC. Again facing entirely new aerodynamics here and we'll see how the shuttle holds up in this new airflow. So far so good of course. At this point standard procedure is to switch the rapier engines to air breathing mode and you saw that just there. But Heytrude does not throttle up and in fact unusual for shuttle descents decides not to use throttle on the turn. And we'll see that in a moment, uh, Heytrude clearly not throttling up during this descent. And Heytrude has in fact practiced uh, powerless descents even in the case of needing to turn around here. And so we'll see a uh, completely unpowered turn here, unlike some of the other shell missions that we've seen previously. And again, no use of mod propellant to stabilize, no use of liquid fuel and oxidizer at all. And Mission Control was entirely pleased that Heytrude would take this tack, though also of course a bit nervous about how this would all turn out. You can see that the shuttle is uh, wiggling a little bit, but uh, Heytrude... Well, Heytrude doesn't always seem entirely confident throughout all this. Uh, she wasn't uh, looking very confident throughout the launch either. In short, Heytrude is proving to be a Kerbal who is very hard to read at this point, and maybe Mission Control will have a word with her about uh, perhaps expressing herself a little bit more straightforwardly. But uh, here we see her lining up with the runway and the trajectory looks good. Uh, approach looks quite nominal and once again uh, no power being used at this point. On seeing her lined up like this, at this altitude, at this distance, Mission Control was already ecstatic and the word ace was being thrown about and indeed uh, if Heytrude makes this landing properly uh, she will be known as the ace of the of the shuttle cruise. Now below one kilometer, runway altitude is 70 meters. Brakes are still retracted. Up there we have uh, air brake extension, 700 meters, and now 600 meters above the runway. 
500 meters, 400 meters, 300 meters, feet dry, 200 meters, 100, looking good 50, 10, touchdown, touchdown, a little bit heavy but not bad, uh, air brakes still out, uh, slowing down quite nicely, uh, probably the best shuttle landing we've seen here at the KSC. Hatred still looks mortified but it's working out quite well and uh, drogue chute is deployed, technically being used as a drag chute here to slow the shuttle down, uh, doesn't really need it. Uh, the shuttle could have stopped well within the runway length with this sort of touchdown, but uh, nice to have it there anyway. And after not using the engines at all uh, throughout, the uh, throughout the descent and landing, uh, Heytru did run them up just a little bit in order to push the shuttle forward so that it could taxi off the runway, the first time we've seen this in a shuttle mission. Uh, normally uh, it is towed off the runway. But uh, Heytru decided that uh, she had uh, provided quite a lot of fuel leeway here to do this. With Mission Control beside itself, completely impressed by the professionalism of this particular landing, uh, they did not argue with her on this little display. But uh, there we have it. Heytru Kerman, ace among the shuttle crews, and ETS-4, uh, complete success, uh, with a small asterisk for that odd initial orbit, but excellent. Help from Jeb Kerman docking up the modules. And so with this, we'll say thank you for watching this presentation of ETS-4. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And we'll see you next time.